Never mind. Try again. Hey man, this is gonna be one of those my wife moments, but it was actually in, inside my. Welcome to a very special edition of Before the Hedges presented by Kroger. My name is Brandon Adams. This is Dog Nation's recruiting insider Jeff Sintel. And up here front center is our good friend Eddie. The reason why Eddie is on set with us today, normally Eddie a fixture on Dog Nation Daily, but making an appearance on Before the Hedges today because today, in honor of Eddie, we're giving out the Eddies, which are the awards that go to the uh, top recruits for Georgia in its 2019 class, just a couple days after the Oscars honor the uh, best in movie making and, and film and cinema. The Eddies will serve that purpose here for UGA Recruiting, and I, for one, could not be more excited. We've even got Jeff Centel in a tie today to give you an idea of just how big of a deal this is. Centel comes loaded for bear wearing the tie and man what a what a great time i guess uh you guys this is the magic of hollywood right here but underneath that gator hater uh license plate that eddie is sworn he will never take off eddie is wearing a black tie eddie is wearing black tie he and wearing his black tie. in keeping with the academy awards kevin hart was also banned from hosting this show as well <laughs> So, you know, this is your monologue. You got to give me some give me some Georgia jokes. You got to start off with something funny a little bit. We got to pan to the crowd. Do you got anything funny uh, up your gator hater sleeve oh, so far? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I could say, did you hear about the uh, Florida fan who uh, broke his leg raking the leaves? How did he break his leg raking leaves? He fell out of the tree. I mean, I, I, like, I, mean, I don't have anything planned, but, you know. Maybe you, you want to make some references to their schedule, perhaps, or their quarterback recruiting, perhaps, or anything else like that. Or what if we just made Gators fans jealous by celebrating the Eddies and all the great success that Georgia's had this year, the kind of success that Florida can only dream about that? What do you say we just dive right in? Or we can tell as many Florida jokes as five stars that are currently on the Florida roster. Yeah, which would only be about, I guess, what very, very few altogether. But nonetheless, over the course of the next few minutes, it's going to be a great way for us to look back on what was a terrific 2019 recruiting cycle for Georgia. Georgia. And have no fear, before we're done, we'll do hurry up with questions and comments and give you a chance to talk about some of the 2020 names if you'd like to do that. But we thought today would be a fun day to kind of loosen up and have a good time and really reflect back on what was another historic haul for the Georgia Bulldogs. So in honor of all that, the first award to be presented, the Eddie goes to Best Score. Now, we had some internal debate on this because uh, this is not Best Song as the Best Score is for the Academy Awards. This is like best touchdown, AKA score. So this is really like best highlight, but in keeping with the closely thematic tie to the Oscars, we're going with the Eddie for best score here. Are you following along? Is this making sense thus far? I got you. you. I guess you could probably intersperse, maybe you could think best highlight clip, which sure. is a touchdown. Um, one of those things is captured on video. Uh, obviously, this is a cinematic visual sure. presentation. So let's take a look at the nominees for the Eddie for best score here for 2019. Now, Bill Norton could be on there, not so much for a score, but for some of those highlights of him doing some Bill Goldberg style uh, suplexes and pro wrestling stuff. You know that's near and dear to my heart, Jeff. Mm. Next cat the next nominee is Lewis Seen. Uh, you have to put Seen in there because we have a uh, Oscar themed. Uh, you know, thematic type look with our Hollywood and our Oscars with our edit. You can look, we can look at our Eddies here, and you can look at Lewis Seen's highlight tape, the way he runs the alley. Yeah. That's that punishing safety Georgia yeah, fans want to see. The folks in Hollywood obviously love blockbuster hits, and nobody laid bigger hits this year than Lewis Seen. And you go moving on, you've got Dominic Blaylock, Dom the Bomb. If we had a category for best nickname, the Dominator, uh, anything you want to do with there. That receiver out of Walton High School would also qualify as well. And then Kenny McIntosh, the bruising running back from down in South Florida for a guy that had a varied array of highlights, whether it be scoring touchdowns, using that big body to punish would-be tacklers. McIntosh did a little bit of it all, right? And uh, he did, and he also returned punts uh, coming out of South Florida. That big bruising back that George has been lacking, maybe some of that short yardage red zone woes from the 2018 season might get solved with a big body like Kenny McIntosh or maybe Zamir White. 
And uh, one thing we like people to do is, you know, not, it's not quite the six pack, but we, we look back at the nominees and I'd like for everybody to maybe cast their votes about who they think should get the first ever Eddie in Dog Nation history. That's right, I have the envelope right here. We'll unveil the winner in just a moment, but we'll give you a chance to weigh in on both Facebook and Twitter with your own thoughts on who the uh, big winner of the Eddie for best score or best highlight here in 2019 should be. Um, Zach Smith says, I think it's either Lewis Seen or Bill Norton. They are both good answers. Robert Reynolds says, I'm gonna go with Kenny McIntosh. That'd also be a really good answer there as well. But without further ado, let's dip in and find out who the winner actually is. Uh, the Eddie for best score here in 2019 goes to Dominic Blaylock. Let's take a look at why. By the way, how about this? Look at this uh, technical capabilities for uh, Before the Edges. This show is all grown up now with the uh, gold statue uh, Eddie there on your screen. And then you also see on your screen as well some of the reasons why Dominic Blaylock was uh, such an effective player this season. How about that score from Blaylock? Eddie Worthy. To be sure. Now, if we had any awards presented backstage prior to today, tonight's broadcast, we would probably go best cinematography for this one as well. And this is a uh, Before the Hedges DogNation.com shout out to Walton High videographer Connor Lounsbury, who let us borrow and let us use that clip of Dominic Blaylock right there. And brings to mind, to me, a little bit of Neo in the Matrix. Yeah. Look at that bullet time photography. He's making guys miss, he's slowing things down. He has a score, Dominic Blaylock. Remember, folks, he is going to be one of the one of the two first time Georgia has signed two five star, excuse me, two receivers that were rated among the top five in their country, in the country, in the nation at their position since 2009. Dominic Blaylock, one of the most heralded receivers in Georgia high school football history. I know a little bit of intel about Dominic Blaylock. This young man is waking up every day. He's lifting, he's working out at 5 a.m. Even though he's on his way to Georgia, um, I've been told that his, scot, his squat, guys, is right now at 430 pounds. I don't think there's a receiver at the University of Georgia that can squat 430 pounds right now. And then at 6 p.m. or later that day, he's doing speed training as well. So Dominic Blaylock, the first ever award winner for highlight or score of the year. Um, he's doing two-a-days already getting ready for his shot at the University of Georgia. Boy, that's an exciting thing to think about. And I tell you what, it's a great way to get our Eddie started here on this edition of Before the Hedges presented by Kroger. And I don't want to gloss over this too quickly. Can we see the Eddie that Dominic uh, just won a moment ago? Because I do think this is an achievement in something, a uh, technical prowess of some kind. Take a look at the gold-plated Eddie on your screen there honoring Dominic Blaylock. I think this is one of our sterling moments here for Before the Hedges. The show has really grown up when we've graduated now to gold-plated, bronzed Eddies on the screen. I gotta say, I'm pretty proud of that. And, and first of all, Brandon, let me help you out with Interview 101. I would, since we're talking about the Eddies and this great achievement, we gotta thank our offensive line. We yeah. gotta thank Connor Riley, the man behind the glass, the guy that brings you Good Day UGA and is the glue, the utility infielder for everything here at dognation.com. He even has this type of skills with Adobe Photoshop and everything else. We say it once, we say it twice. Connor is the man beneath our wings All here right. at Dog Nation. In our YouTube comment section, we actually have a little bit of controversy. <coughs> so maybe I want the entire team here, uh, Michael, Connor, everybody to weigh in on this. So you mentioned the the nickname that we talked about for Blake like a couple months ago, the idea of Dom the Bomb. Brian Kephart uh, was the one that started that, and he was actually glad to know that we're trying to keep the Dom the Bomb nickname going. I think it's a great nickname, and I was glad to have Brian introduce that on the show a couple of months ago. But Enrique Morello's also got his own idea for a Blaylock nickname on YouTube. He says, what about Big Play Blay? I like that. Blaylock, Big Play Blay. I'm getting thumbs down from Connor on that. Listen, you all know Connor. I mean, he didn't think of it, so it's going to be a bad idea. Michael Carvel's giving us a thumbs up for that. I actually think Big Play Blay is a pretty good nickname. Dom the Bomb may be my favorite, but Big Play Blay is actually a pretty good nickname. I like the Dominator. This is also what Dominator works as well. This is also one of those things like Apollo Creed where you've got to have a lot of nicknames to show how cool you are. Anybody that's got more than one nickname is usually in pretty good shape. So if you're Dominic Blay, like you're going to have a big career in Georgia, having more than one nickname just kind of makes sense. So Apollo Creed had uh, the Count of Monte Fisto. King of Sting. The King of Sting, the Dancing Destroyer. 
Um, there's a little master cinema of moment. disaster. <laughs> the master of disaster. So that's a cinematic moment, a homage to Oscar and a Best Picture nominee as well. We got this thing going. The Count of Monte Cristo is an underrated one for uh, for, uh, for Apollo Creed for sure. But nonetheless, we're off and running here. Before <coughs> the Hedge is presented by Kroger. The first Eddie for Best Score goes out to Dominic Blaylock. We're going to honor a lot more to come, including a, a recruit of the year later on a recruiter of the year as well, and a whole lot of fun in between then. Of course, it's all presented by Kroger. And speaking of Kroger, come out and join your local Kroger chef uh, for a guided goods cooking experience, including an apron and patch, a chef's hat, a recipe card box, and spatula. This uh, month, it's just $7. And in the month of March, Kroger Chef Junior is going to be featuring chicken salad. That's March 2nd and March 16th. So coming up pretty soon here, a couple times in the month of March, make sure you go to KrogerChefJunior.com for more information about how you and your family can be a part of Kroger Chef Jr. What a uh, fun thing that is. I've already seen some photos that some of you sent in to me of you and your own family being a part of Kroger Chef Jr. and it certainly seems to be something that everyone is enjoying. Hold on, what was that, Eddie? What was that, Eddie? Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, all right, Eddie says he's got a better nickname or a better wordplay than you. Is that right? Else. All right, what is that? Eddie says, from with the bomb to Dom. Ooh, I don't mind that. Maybe we'll that. hear that at the University of Georgia play-by-play uh, -play announcers from Scott Howard down the road a little bit. That is certainly a good thought to think about. All right, moving on. Obviously, Georgia in its 2019 class, like a lot of its recent recruiting cycles, has been dominated by the big five-star names. But that's not the only kinds of recruits that Georgia brings in, nor is it just the five-star recruits that succeed once they get to UGA. So for the next couple of minutes, we're going to highlight a couple of the other names from the other tier of UGA recruits. Georgia did sign a couple three-star recruits this year, and some of these, maybe all of them, have a chance to make big names for themselves at the University of Georgia. So let's take a look right now at our nominees for the Eddie for Outstanding Three-Star Recruit in Georgia's 2019 class. You've got the mailman, Stetson Bennett, who comes back as a very popular quarterback, big-time defensive lineman in Tymon Mitchell, Brett Scyther shows up here as the three-star tight end, and Lawrence Cager shows up here as the graduate transfer uh, wide receiver. Jeff, there's really a lot to like from, from all of these names. I think the thing you like the best, and maybe this category might even be eliminated by Kirby Smart in years to come, but if you look at those, those are the only three stars that Georgia signed this That's year. That's amazing. You even had to dip into the transfer portal to find one Lawrence Cager out of Miami, out of South Beach and Coral Gables, to figure out the best three-star recruit. Now, if you listen to the Georgia roster, they may say this award's supposed to go to Bennett. Obviously, I've talked about some excitement that I have about a former three-star prospect in Lawrence Cager transferring over. I think he can make an impact. But the Eddie for top three-star recruit for Georgia this season. Without further ado, let's open up the envelope here. Let me go through the uh, let me go through the motions. Let me open up the envelope here. The Eddie for top three-star recruit, as you take a look at there on your screen, goes to the tight end, Brett Scyther. Now, for me, Jeff, there's a very specific reason why I thought that Scyther should be honored with the Eddie for best three-star recruit. You'll see on your screen some of the highlights why, but for me, it's about more than that. Remember back when Terrence Edwards was with us on signing day in February, early February, when he talked about his impressions of Brett Scyther? Edwards, a guy who's still the all-time leading receiver in Georgia, sees in Scyther the kind of rare athlete at tight end that may do a whole lot more than you would typically expect from a three-star recruit. Here's what Terrence Edwards said on a Before the Hedges recruiting special just a couple of weeks ago. I just watched this film recently once we uh, made an offer and other schools are offering and I could tell you this, he's different than any other tight end that we have on our roster right now. Um, he's 6'5", 235 pounds, but he moves like a small wide receiver and that's something that uh, in today's game that we're going to, like a, a Mevin Ingram and, and from Ole Miss that plays with the Giants. you got these tight ends now. Um, Irv Smith from Alabama yeah. uh, last year was one of those guys that run routes like a receiver and move like a receiver. And this guy here uh, is definitely one of those guys that can, can impact Georgia. K9 Blue says the three-star recruit Eddie Award winner ought to be Brett Scyther, period. And when you listen to Terrence Edwards talk there, making the comparison to Melvin Ingram, talking about the athleticism he has, almost a wide receiver style tight end, it's easy to understand why Scyther walks away with the Eddie here. Yeah, and even this week on Dog Nation, we had some more comments from Terrence because he tweeted out his maybe vote of confidence for Scyther. He saw some of his highlights. He saw the way he moves in space, the way he covers ground. You also saw, he also was very impressed by watching him play safety. 
at 230 pounds. Felt he looked like a 185 pounder in the secondary as a safety. He covered ground well. He closed down on guys really well, even playing a defensive back position. And folks, the thing you got to remember about Brett Scyther, um, came down to Alabama and Georgia. So kind of weird how he still kept that three-star rating. Not many three-stars come down to Alabama and Georgia. Dismissed schools like Penn State and other schools that were in the mix there, Miami for him as well. But Brett Scyther, folks, has played two seasons, two seasons of high school football, and he's already performing like that on the football field. Let me talk to a more serious you know, version of this topic. Jeremy Chapman on the Facebook comment section says, he thinks the Eddie Award winner for top three-star recruit should have gone to Stetson Bennett, the quarterback. He thinks that Bennett's got what it takes to be Georgia's number two quarterback this season. Jeff, on a more serious note, when you look ahead to Georgia on the field in 2019, do you see Bennett likely emerging as the number two quarterback? And what does that mean for Georgia if it is the former junior college player, the former walk-on at Georgia, now in a scholarship role? Is he ready for SEC backup, is that asking too much from Stetson Bennett this season? I don't think so, because he's played wire to wire in junior college football, and everybody looks at Stetson's stats, and one of the things I went back to and looked at, because it wasn't brilliant, Howie, I think he had like 16 touchdowns and maybe 12 or 13 interceptions. Folks, you got to remember, junior college football is not where the offensive linemen end up, it's where the defensive linemen end up. And really, a lot of those times, some of those junior college games, I went back and looked at the box scores, and, and Stetson was throwing under pressure a lot. Stetson was getting sacked four or five times a game a lot at Jones uh, as a Bobcat for Jones County Community College as well. And you, here's what we want to talk about, Brandon. You're like, Stetson Bennett, is the mailman the guy? I would think Stetson should be the backup, at least for the first couple months of the season. Why do I think that? Number one, he's been around big-time college football. He was the he was the backup quarterback, the third team quarterback for Georgia, the scout team quarterback. How many times have we rehashed the he's the GOAT comment from Mel Tucker and Roquan Smith, Lorenzo Carter and others about how well he prepared Georgia for Baker Mayfield for the Rose Bowl? All that's good, but also Stetson Bennett has prepared as the starter and played a lot last year in junior college football. That says a lot, so does the affinity with the offense, so does being on campus at the University of Georgia. Remember, Richard LeCount was a huge fan of Stetson Bennett coming out of Pierce County in Blackshear, even before he stepped foot on the campus at the University of Georgia. I think all those things, his maturity, as well as Dwan Mathis being pretty raw and also being an, a freshman early enrollee at Georgia, got to get that body right first. I'd like to see, the debate might be, who's going to be the quarterback, the backup quarterback in mid-November. Mm -hmm. But early on, especially for that big Notre Dame game, I think that's got to be the mailman. A couple comments here. John McMillan on Facebook says that Brett Scyther, the winner of the Eddie for top three-star signing for Georgia this season, would have been a four, maybe even a five-star had he had more film, more camp. I mean, what do you think of the way that Scyther was evaluated? It almost seems like, from one standpoint, maybe he was noticed a bit too late. But there's also a school of thought here by waiting as late as he did to announce his commitment, he put himself in play for more big schools like Georgia and Alabama to get involved for his services. Yeah, we made this point a couple weeks back on our Before the Hedges that Scyther being a very contested recruit late in the traditional or late signing period ends up with more offers than a guy like George Pickens or Trayvon Walker or Nolan Smith. Uh, Scyther was well over 30 offers because he was probably the country's second best available tight end uh, going down late into the late into the recruiting period through the I guess the closing finish of January. Uh, I guess this is the part where we also talk about an award that was handed out prior to our ceremony, the best junior college uh, recruit in the class. And you had lots of nominees. You had Stetson Bennett, the mailman. You had Jermaine DJ Johnson. Daniel. You had Jermaine Johnson. You had uh, Tramel Walthor as well. Uh, the award, which was presented earlier today, but prior to the broadcast, the best junior college recruit, that went to Jermaine Johnson. Yeah, good for him on that. One more comment to mention here. Maurice Carter says, hey, don't gloss over the Eddie for top three-star signee because had we had this conversation a year ago and before the hedges, that top three-star signee may very well have been Jordan Davis. And look how important Davis turned out to be on the field for Georgia this season. I think Maurice makes an outstanding point by bringing that up. Great point, Maurice. That's a good kind of telling point or, a, you know, basically a flashback point for uh, Jordan Davis and what he meant. One other thing about Scyther I want people to really kind of to get a sense of there is very hard for somebody to – catch seven balls as a junior in high school and get rated as high to work your way up to five-star status. It doesn't mm -hmm. happen. Probably a lot is where you start out and where you get recruited. But I, let's say this, once Scyther's senior film came out and he caught those 40 balls and for like 500, 600, 700 yards and all those touchdowns, 
he was being recruited like he was a four-star tight end and a top 10 tight end at that. All right, still to come, we'll have our Recruit of the Year, the Eddie Award for that. Recruiter of the Year, we'll celebrate that as a part of our Eddie Awards. As we do before the Hedges, presented by Kroger, and a look at the Eddies, the top awards and designations for Georgia's 2019 class. We just gave out the Eddie for top three-star signing for Georgia this season. Let's also look at top four-star signing. And one of the interesting things, and we'll see the nominees here in a moment, but for a lot of these four-star names, Jeff, if you really listen to our conversation over the course of the year, whether it be Tyreek Stevenson, Blaylock, who spent most of the year as a five-star and did drop down as a four-star near the end of the year, Lewis Seen, the outstanding safety from uh, Trinity School there, Texas, DJ Daniel, the uh, junior college transfer, Jermaine Johnson, another junior college transfer, in a lot of ways, these four-star names, you'll have a pocket of Georgia fans who'll say, no, that's my guy. I don't care about five-star. This, you know, but Lewis Seen's going to be the guy that breaks out. Or DJ Daniels going to be the guy that breaks out. You talked about Jermaine Johnson a moment ago. It's kind of funny from this four-star name, this four-star crop of names, there are a lot of really significant fan favorites uh, among Georgia fans already from this group. Well, looking at those nominees, you know, I, I could sit there and you could talk about the balloting and who would be a deserving nominee for me. Um, I look at Lewis Seen, for example, who's already showed up once, and to me, he's probably got the best personal story, and that's one of the things I do at Dog Nation is try to, try to let you guys look at these players, you know, aside from the football or beyond the helmet and what they do on the field. And, you know, Lewis's story, um, why he wears number 16, his mother still in Haiti, what he wants to do um, through the course of his football career to bring her to America. Uh, why he wears number 16 is because she had him when she was 16 years old and she had a tough start. Uh, to his life, but she persevered. I love that story. Lewis is really great there. And then you could also make a case for somebody already picking up their second Eddie with a guy like Dominic Blaylock as yes, well. Yes, you could. Um, Blaylock is doing everything he possibly can to endear himself to the fan base. But it's actually Loy Dog on YouTube who gets this one right. He says that the award ought to go to Tyreek the Freak and Loy Dog's exactly right. When you open up the envelope, the Eddie for top four star signee for Georgia does go the four-star defensive back Tyreek Stevenson. Jeff, you spent some time with Stevenson, uh, really in his home in Florida for a while, but also out in San Antonio for the uh, all, the All-American Bowl. What was it like being with him the day that he became a Georgia signee? And your thoughts on Stevenson? Well, you got to look at a lot of things. Number one, the pure football sense of it is he could be a, a, a safety, a nickel back. He could be the dominant press man corner. He's very physical at the point of attack. 24-7 Sports even rated him as a five-star recruit, but his composite rating had, had him as the four-star recruit. And if I had to start thinking up, maybe I'll write this someday on the site, but the biggest moments for me in the 2019 class, the moment when he committed and the, the interaction between him and his mother, the true tears and the true joy and the true euphoria uh, couldn't be faked. I don't even think the, the best actress at, that was nominated or that was honored by the Academy this year could could mimic what what his mother did uh, Jackie Stevenson and how well she just baby displayed her pride in her boy for what he was doing and checking off a, a childhood dream and a lifelong goal to play for Georgia tremendous nominee set right there I mean every one of them are all it's this is one of those things where you break out that award show cliche it is an honor just to be nominated amongst dudes like that yeah no doubt about it and it wasn't just Stevenson's mom who was excited on the day that Stevenson chose UGA. For Stevenson, he also had a lot of reasons to be excited as well. And here's what he had to say to you in San Antonio the day that he picked the dogs. Here is Tyreek Stevenson, the winner of the Eddie for Georgia's best four-star signee. Why was it Georgia? Just me being comfortable with Coach Smart and trusting what he says, and, you know, being comfortable with the team and the facility, so that's why you did. You know, with the uh, Coach Tucker situation, they hit me up first, you know, they let me know what was going on. They told me no panic, you know, I trusted that, so then no fat is right there. I think Georgia deserves a lot of credit for how it navigated the difficulty of departing Mel Tucker and making a defensive coordinator switch and keeping a, a guy like Tyreek Stevenson in the fold, in the know, and making him feel comfortable. And, Jeff, one of the reasons why Stevenson would get my nod as best four-star signee, one of the reasons why I want to give him the Eddie for that is because with DeAndre Baker leaving, bringing in a host of true cornerbacks to, to fill that void becomes really important. And I just think that Stevenson's got a really good chance of being that guy for Georgia. You see what he mean? This is another South Florida Bulldog, another guy that um, leaned on guys like James Cook and Devod Wilson that were already there, Tyson Campbell, in order to find the confidence that he needed to matriculate to the University of Georgia. 
Tyreek Stevenson is a guy that can do a lot of things. I think he ended up as the nation's number four cornerback for the uh, 2019 cycle. I mean, just a tremendous player, about 6'1", about 205. I love the way he was very genuine during the All-American Week in San Antonio. And what I mean genuine is he was signing autographs and playing basketball with the kids at the YMCA there in San Antonio. He was so enveloped by the kids because the kids love Tyreek. They, the, kid, the kids love the freak. Uh, he was signing autographs. The bus of all the All-Americans actually left him, and they had to come back and pick him up because they left him behind at the Boys and Girls Club. He was spending so much time uh, with the kids there and everything else like that. And You know, Brandon, for someone that – I just had a thought. For someone that's just jumping into our show and they're, uh -huh. they're thinking about Eddie's and they're thinking about, you know, what are we doing with the Oscars – don't they need to know what, for someone that's just joining your program, what Eddie's all about? That's a really good point. Maybe some people are new to Dog Nation and don't realize how Eddie got his start on Dog Nation Daily. I know many of you also listen to Before the Hedges on the podcast, so you may not see this, but uh, for many of you that just listen to Dog Nation Daily, you don't see this a lot either. But a long time ago, Dan Mullen, upon kind of you know chiding Georgia about beating Florida and winning the SEC, says even a blind squirrel can find a nut every once in a while. Well, uh, we kind of had some fun with that, and Eddie kind of became our own blind squirrel. So we put the blindfold on Eddie. He can't see. He's got the official Gator Hater logo uh, sign that he holds up every day, reminding the world that he hates those lousy, stinking Gators. And Eddie, it was cool enough that we were able to take him with us to Jacksonville this past year. So when Georgia found another one of those nuts against Florida this past season, Eddie was right there on the field at uh, Everbank Stadium, or whatever the name of that thing is now to uh, celebrate that and enjoy that. And I gotta tell you something, that was a pretty, uh, pretty nice old night to uh, celebrate that with our buddy Eddie. And it's great to have him as a part of Before the Hedges Today, presented by Kroger, as we give out the first ever Eddies for the 2019 recruiting class. The uh, first annual Eddies. First that. annual. So, I mean, maybe in years to come on Before the Hedges, people might having, be having their own Eddies parties or something That's like exactly that. That's exactly right. Watching a Dog Nation special edition. All right, by the way, it's all possible because of Kroger. And don't forget right now at Kroger, you can save big on snacks and cereals at Kroger this weekend. I mean, $1.99 for giant size cereals, including Cheerios, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and also you can save big on Keebler multi-pack snacks, including cheese. its for only $4.99. So download the coupon beginning February 27th. That is today. Uh, you can start downloading it, and then you can redeem it in stores on March 1st and 2nd. Go to Kroger.com or the Kroger app for more details on that. What great savings coming up at your local Kroger this weekend. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. All right, moving right along here. Jeff, it's time to give out our next Eddie. And this is not like the Academy Awards where it drags out forever. We don't have any kind of in-memoriam thing. Uh, we don't have anything like that. It's going to drag all this out. It, we don't have a montage of all the recruits that got away and no, we haven't no, scrolling yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. We're not doing one of those deals <laughs> of uh, Jaden kind of sailing out to uh, Norman, Oklahoma. We're not doing that. This is all killer, no filler. So we move straight on to the next Eddie, which goes to the most original recruit, but much the same way I was asked to explain what Eddie even is and who he even is. Give us an idea of what you mean when you think original when it comes to UGA recruits and UGA signings. Original is a guy that I think of that uh, does things their own way. Maybe like, you know, what's that popular, uh, let's call it a, a beverage commercial where the most interesting man in 2019 Georgia recruiting, kind of the guy that just beat of his own drum, you know, I like that term you just use, killer, not filler, a guy that just does things his own way. If we had to capsulize it in a six second soundbite, I would say the my way Frank Sinatra recruit of the 2019 class. Now, by the way, Adrian Carver wants to know, will we be serving acorns at our uh, Eddie's watch parties in future years? <laughs> You'll be filling out your own like pool sheet for your own picks on who's gonna win these awards, eating acorns and I got one, one more for everybody out there because we like to you listen to our audience and gather in feedback and create a better mousetrap out of everything. Of course, there's a Eddie's category for next year you'd like to see. Feel free to drop it. Yeah, comments. drop that in. For now, though, let's show you the nominees for this year's Eddie for Most Interesting Recruit. Once again, Dominic Blaylock, who is a multi-time nominee already, he shows up on here. Rylan Goaty, the tight end from the Atlanta area, also a name worth considering here. Tresman Marshall was certainly an interesting guy. His recruitment became a little dramatic at the end as Tennessee tried to get involved. Hard to know what really went on there. And also Clay Webb, the five-star offensive lineman from Oxford, Alabama, that chose Georgia over Alabama and Clemson, leaving the in-state school to go to the Dogs. He's a name on this list as well. Uh, if you want to kind of weigh in and think who you think 
is supposed to win this one. We'll give you a chance to do that. Uh, K9 Blues thinks he knows who it's going to be. Um, K9 Blues also says this is kind of the Notori Johnson for 2019. There's no doubt that in a previous class, Notori Johnson would have been a very good, Snow most cup. interesting recruit winter. There's a uh, winner that's a pretty good uh, selection. Crow King 123 also in on this one as well. Uh, they think they know, um, and I th Mark Godfrey's kind of in on the same thing as well. So it would appear the cat is out of the bag with a lot of the answers that we're getting. Without further ado, let's see if those folks are right. I'll go ahead and spoiler alert and say they are. A lot of folks were in on this to begin with. The most interesting recruit for Georgia this year is Clay Webb. Jeff, tell us why so many of our commenters already seem to know that there was no one more likely to be the Eddie for most interesting recruit than Clay Webb. What makes Webb so interesting? So, so first of all, guys, I don't, we don't have a teleprompter. This is just what comes into my mind about Clay Webb. Uh, the, he is the Marty McFly recruit. And anybody that knows Marty McFly, Netflix, you know, DVR, Voodoo, whatever you got to do, Amazon Video, watch Back to the Future. And Marty McFly is the Michael J. Fox time traveler character. And to me, in the year 2019, Clay Webb seems like the recruit or the recruiting process that could have been plucked out of Hill Valley in 1985, uh, the Twin Pines Mall, if anybody wants to remember back that far. <clears throat> so many stuff, so much stuff about Clay Webb here. Number one, uh, Clay Webb is currently at the University of Georgia, basically wearing shorts every single stinking day he can. I mean, when it's 30 A lot of offensive linemen do that, though. Offensive linemen are kind of weird in that regard anyway. It is. When it's 30 degrees outside, Clay Webb is still wearing shorts. Yeah. He's the guy that... Um, Fascinating. Number one, never took an official visit. Why? Because he thought that all these universities basically offering up these half a million dollars worth of scholarships when you think about strength training, coaching, housing, education, um, you know, just living in the dorm, gear, everything else like that. He viewed that as upwards of at least a half a million dollars that were being offered and he didn't think it was right for him to ask schools to pay for him to come hear about that. You know, first off, sometimes you hear these things from other recruits, and if you played a videotape of that of that interview or that thought from Clay Webb, some other recruits would think that aliens just kind of came out of his ear, how it just didn't seem right. And then when Clay Webb chooses Georgia over Alabama and Auburn, a rare five-star coming out of the Yellowhammer State, he has a weekend left, uh, and he can take an official visit. And I was like, okay, you're going to take your official visit to Georgia now? And he's like, I've already been there. Why do I need to take an official visit? And here's where it gets better. Uh, Clay Webb Part 2, Clay Webb Part 3. He decides to bypass the Under Armour All-American game, give up that week in Disneyland or Disney World, give up all that gear, all that great Under Armour gear and swag, and he just goes and reports straight to Georgia. Because why? He's like, that's not going to get me better. That's mm. not going to make me a good football player as a freshman. That's what he wanted to do. And the other thing with Georgia and Sam Pittman and Clay Webb is, rated as the nation's number one center, a five-star at center, but you ask him, and he's like, man, center is tough. Center is so much you got to juggle. You got to identify the mic, the line protections. You got to call things out. You got to be the steward, the point guard of the offensive line. He said, man, that's tough. I don't want to jump into that right now. I want to be a guard. I want to get my feet wet and play guard and just block the dude in front of me. Sam Pittman said, hey, no problem here. You can come be a guard. And that's how it all ended up. But isn't it true that being cut from a different kind of cloth probably helps Webb at Georgia because – Let's face it, it takes a different kind of person to want to engage in what is already such an intense competition with Georgia along the offensive line, especially with those interior offensive line positions. Center, guard, whatever Webb wants to consider himself, he's got stiff competition at all those position groups. If he's a little more, and I mean this you know, half kidding, half serious, but if he's a little more normal, if he goes about his business the way that a normal recruit does, he might not flourish at Georgia, but because he is a little bit unique, uh, a little bit different, then coming in and, and facing those challenges and, and taking that competition on and letting the chips fall where they may, he may actually be pretty well equipped to handle all of that because of just the fact that he kind of marches to the beat of his own drum. I mean, I, I could have a category for my favorite Clay Webb story because I forgot to and all that stuff. Number one, his cell phone got stolen midway through his senior year. And think about this, cell phone stolen, not just cracked, stolen. He never bothered to re replace it. Why? because he didn't need all that stuff from recruiting reporters and coaches and people calling him and wanting him to recruit him. That made him a 1985 recruit basically yeah. in its purest form because what he did is he could control the recruiting on his terms. When he went somewhere 
to go on a visit. That's when the recruiting happened. Not when everybody was bombarding his phone, wanting to take visits, wanting to take in homes and everything else like that. Final story about Clay Webb that's just great. That's the time he tried to set the squat record at Oxford High School. He had so many plates on the bar. He was going parallel. He was up to 630, 640. They ran out of plates in the weight room. So that number probably could have been a lot closer to 700 with his squat. They just ran out of weights for him to attempt that lift. Joel Moody says, B.A., don't forget he's a wrestler, too, and that's always a good thing. You all know I like that. Adam Phillips says he also just jumped on my uh, favorites list. So Adam and like a lot of these other uh, viewers right now and listeners enjoying some of those stories about Clay Webb, who does become the Eddie Award winner for Georgia's most interesting 2019 signee. If you're just joining us, we're doing Before the Hedges presented by Kroger, but a special edition of the program as we give out the Eddies for uh, Georgia's top 2019 recruits in a various number of categories. In fact, let's move on to the best moment for a UGA 2019 signee. From any commitment or announcement, the best of these, and I guess for the most part, 2019 was a little, I don't want to say lackadaisical, but you know, compared to Quay Walker throwing a hat or Isaiah Wilson bringing out a bulldog mm -hmm. or Isaiah Wilson having a ceremony that lasted 15 hours. Mm -hmm. This year's ceremonies were a lot more kind of low key than some of what we've seen from UGA signees and commitment deciders in the past. Yeah, we'd love to have had a, you know, you think about commitment videos. Well, there weren't really a lot of these that were, would qualify for consideration by the Academy. Uh, you remember years past DeAndre Swift's um, epic uh, Creed or yeah. Rocky? running through the streets of Philadelphia, the Jamari Salyer mic drop that Enjoy did with Dog that Nation. One. Maybe even a Christmas commitments or two oh, from uh, dognation.com. This year was a little different than that. You didn't really have, you have a lot, had a lot of tweets, you had a lot of announcements, you had a lot of ceremonial type things. So this one was a lot tougher than in years past. So let's take a look at the nominees for top moment for 2019 uh, commitment decisions. The Kobe Dean's on here, Ryland Goaty's on here. Dominic Blaylock's on here, and Lewis Seen's on here. Without further ado, let's take a look at the Eddie for best commitment moment, and it does go to the five-star linebacker, N'Kobe Dean. Now, let me tell you why I think that Dean ought to have won this award, and I'll admit behind the scenes, I kind of campaigned for Dean on this. Maybe I'm an old-school guy, and maybe that's why this is such a big deal to me, but I love the idea of the youngster here in 2019 Pulling out the old school Georgia shirt with the cartoon kind of hairy dog looking dog on that. That looks like something I would have worn growing up. You gotta love the idea of the young guys today with an appreciation for the old school ways, especially given the fact that uh, logo is probably pretty painful for a lot of the folks in Horn Lake, Mississippi to have to see. Nicobe Dean going old school for me, that is the Eddie for best moment. That's why I think he deserves the award. So here's the, the story behind the story on that. If we had to go behind the, behind the Eddies, not mm -hmm. behind the music, but behind, right. behind the Eddies. I mean, how can you not love a young man in this day and age who's still kind of into the old school stuff? I really appreciate that. If he brought out a, if he would have put a trucker hat on with the, uh, like the uh, cartoon Bulldog logo there, that would have made my day. Like a, like a gas station trucker hat? That would have been very cool. So the funny part about that is early that morning, he was leaning away from Georgia, leaning towards Ole Miss. He kept coming back to education, where he was going to get the best education. Nicobe was like, college is about going to school, right? That's the way it should be. And this is spoken from a young man that never made a B in his high school career. He had a 4.7 his senior year, GPA, finished with a 4.4. His last B was in seventh grade in typing. Why'd he get the B? Because his fingers were too fat way back then. Um, but the story of the shirt going behind the eddies here, everybody that wonders about these recruits and how they get pampered or people like dropping bags or whatever you want to say, he didn't have any Georgia gear. Any Georgia gear coming out of his visits, he'd visited Georgia several times. He goes to a drugstore in Athens on his way out and picks up that yeah. t-shirt. You love it. That t-shirt. So I'm sure all these college kids would love to have fun with maybe some disposable income on their hands. Maybe that might be a thing. Go find a drugstore around Athens. See if you can get the N'Kobe Dean old school 
commitment sweatshirt. By the way, Brian McPhail in our YouTube comment section also mentions for best possible moment for a UGA signee. He says, don't forget about the Dean and Scene show. <coughs> was that San Antonio they put the Dean and Scene show on together? Uh, that was Louis uh, Scene and, and uh, Nicobe Dean? What's the official name of that? What's that? You go to Disney World all the time, I bet. What's the name of the Under Lake Armour? Buena Vista, Florida or okay, whatever? Yeah, yeah. It was at the Under, Under Armour in, Armour, okay. in Lake Buena Vista, and those two guys were hanging out having fun in the flora, the fauna, flower pants a little bit, but you know, looking back on that list, uh, I think Lewis Seen had that one of those chiming in media commitment videos. One of the very few professionally polished commitment videos for the class of 2019. That is true. So the Eddies roll on here. We're glad to have you as a part of that before the hedges presented by Kroger. That is Dog Nation's recruiting insider Jeff Sintel. I'm Brandon Adams. This is the legendary Eddie the Blind Squirrel. And as we move on to our next Eddie Award, this one, and we had some internal debate on this, what this is supposed to be, but we kind of arrived at the Eddie for most likely to succeed. Now coming up, we've still got a recruiter of the year to give away, a recruit of the year to give away, but we wanted to do most likely to succeed. And I got a feeling if we really open this up to, hey, who's gonna have a 10 year NFL career? You know, who would you buy stock in for the future as a pro? I'm imagining we're gonna have a lot of different answers on this. It's kind of funny that the, those of us who kind of weighed in on this behind the scenes, we were kind of all in agreement. I think you and I both thought the same guy, Connor Riley, kind of thought the same guy here as well. I'd be very curious to see what the audience thinks. Here are the uh, nominees for the Eddie for the most likely to succeed. For me, this means 10-year NFL career. This means the kind of guy that comes back later on and, you know, Brooke Whitmire at Sanford Stadium says, let's welcome back, you know, to Sanford Stadium and huge ovation comes out. The aforementioned of Kobe Dean, Trayvon Walker, Nolan Smith, or George Pickens. We've already got a lot of people weigh, weighing in. Joel Moody says Kevin Jones. I'm sorry, Kevin Jones says Trayvon Walker. Joel Moody says Nolan Smith. Zach Smith says he thinks it could be Nolan or Nicobe Dean. Matt Turner says Trayvon Walker. Bill Kelly says Nolan Smith, no doubt. Maurice Carter says George Pickens. Mark Godfrey says Nolan Smith. So we're all over. We got all kinds of answers uh, coming in here. The YouTube kind of much the same way. A Lloyd Dog says Nolan Smith. K9 Blue says he thinks Nolan Smith is the next Von Miller. Uh, Brian McPhail says um, Nolan Smith's going to have success like Roquan Smith. Kelly Burnett's vote goes to Nicobe Dean. Crow King 123 says, how about just all four of them? It's kind of funny how divided the audience is, but around here, we were all kind of the same on this. So let's see if the audience yells at us too much as I go to the envelope. The winner for the Eddie, for the most likely to succeed for Georgia's 2019 class, we said five-star defensive tackle Trayvon Walker as the guy who is the most likely to have that 15-year you know, NFL run, maybe 15 years is a little long. Uh, you had a chance to catch up with him at the Touchdown Club of Atlanta Awards Banquet uh, back in early January. He was already looking the part, and he was talking to you then about his focus and dedication, getting himself in the right physical condition. He's obviously not an early enrollee. That's potentially a challenge. He seems eager to meet that challenge. But in particular, Jeff, the thing that we liked about Walker and the thing that I think speaks to his athleticism maybe more than anything else is not something he's done on the football field, but what he's shown in the basketball court. Take a look at uh, Trayvon Walker getting up and throwing down this windmill dunk. Jeff, this is the kind of athleticism that I'm not even sure that Nolan Smith can rival. And I don't say that, you know, casually at all because I think Nolan is an uh, elite premier athlete. I don't know that Trayvon Walker is not the best athlete from the group, though. So probably the one that people are already tweeting about and they're saying fire Eddie or Eddie controversy or whatever you want to say. Here's what this category came down to me. We were kicking it around like most talented, most likely to succeed, um, most likely to be an NFL first round draft pick. That's kind of the way I kind of mm -hmm. framed it up. Um, meanwhile, another award presented earlier before the show was best shoes in the category. Yeah. Uh, Trayvon Walker won those for his yeah. purple shoes. But staying back on point. That's more of like a Joan Rivers type thing and like the E Network red yeah. carpet special or something like that. Correct, but for me, I think Trayvon Walker, considering his resume and his ups and Lee Knights did get upset in the playoffs last week, so they didn't get a chance to win their third straight state championship on the basketball court. But when you think about Trayvon Walker at about 6'6", six, six, close to 6'6", six, six, 295 pounds now, 290 pounds now, 
What he's done on the basketball court with that dunk, what he can do on the football field as a five-star defensive tackle, that marquee five-star defensive tackle for Georgia. Uh, finally, Georgia and landing one of those under Kirby Smart. But I just think he's the best pound-for-pound pound athlete in the class because what he can do with that weight at 290. Of course, Nolan Smith can walk on water and do a great many things. He's and by the way, in our, in our Facebook comment section, Brandon Vernon said, also, don't forget, y'all, Nolan Smith's got a 44-inch vertical leap. So if you're going to make a big deal about uh, Trayvon's vertical leap, you can't forget about Nolan's vertical leap as well. It's all great. Nolan is one of the – he won the Spark Rating Championship this year at the Nike opening. He is a extremely twitchy dude. But then no one's only about 230, and look what no, look what Trayvon Walker can do at 290. Not only that, he's got a little bit of Jim Thorpe to him as well, or maybe the decathlon to him as well. Because look what he does. He's also a state finalist. He throws the shot at a state finalist level in the Georgia High School Athletic Association. So he's already in the one percentile, the number one percentile of all high school athletes in football, basketball, and track. He's won multiple state championships. I think Ups and Lee's uh, win streak stretched all the way to 75 games across Trayvon's high school career. Is Sumter that beat him? Yeah, and then the other thing with Trayvon is he's a, the state championships he's won as well, but you're looking at a big man there who's probably, for his high school career, averaged somewhere around 11 points, nine boards, three assists, and two blocks per game. And that's your defensive tackle, and that's why I think uh, NFL Pro Scouts will look at that the total package of athleticism, especially after three years in Sinclair's kind of kitchen, getting cooked up and getting his right with his body and his weight redistributed and his explosion. I think Trayvon Walker has a very bright future. And I'll give you a little spoiler alert here. You'll hear Nolan Smith's name as a, an Eddie Award winner probably before we're done here today on Before the Hedges presented by Kroger. But before we get to that, though, it's time to award the Eddie for Georgia's Recruiter of the year and this is another one of those debates that I'd imagine in our comment section is going to create quite a spirited competition. We did have some internal debate on this of which of Georgia's assistant coaches had the best haul for what he brought in here for this 2019 class. So let's go ahead and show you the nominees for the Eddie Award for the top recruiter from Georgia's 2019 staff for the 2019 class. Obviously, Sam Pittman's deserving of recognition on here, like every year. Glenn Schumann as well, the now co-defensive coordinator at UGA. Dan Lanning, uh, Glenn Schumann's so good he gets to be on here twice. Uh, Cortez Hankton, the wide receivers coach, also gets his name on here. And defensive line coach Trey Scott. Now, Jeff, there's a lot of ways we could have gone with this. But ultimately, when you really start putting pen to paper, it's hard not to be impressed with the man who just got himself a big award, a big raise, a big new title. So let's send out some congratulations. I open up the envelope here. The Eddie for 2019 Recruiter of the Year for Georgia goes to new Georgia defensive coordinator Dan Lanning. This is a deserving award. You could have gone a couple of different ways, but you can't deny that Lanning is certainly deserving. I think within the academy, Cortez Hankton rallied a lot of support late for his performance in the George Pickens recruitment, as well as his continued performance in the Micaiah Tung and Dominic Blaylock. Um, prequel additions to the 2019 recruiting class, I would say, especially at wide receiver. Uh, Cortez Hankton did a fine job. and. But everybody's eventually going to see the accounting and what came down to Dan Lanning. All right, here it goes. Lead recruiter on Nolan Smith. Check. Uh, lead recruiter on Jermaine Johnson. Check. Uh, secondary to and recruiter and area recruiter for N'Kobe Dean. That's a big one and a big impact that Lanning made. And let's not forget some of the work he's done putting in recruiting appearances for movies that will show up later in the Mikhail Sherman movie, the Zacavius Walker yep. movie in the 2020 award system in the award season as well. The new defensive coordinator at the University of Georgia. Tireless is the word to describe him because he's everywhere on the recruiting trail. Recruiting like he was the guy that just got the job on the staff, the youngest dude on the staff. We decided, and we knew there was kind of some splitting hairs a little bit yeah. there considering the name Sam Pittman was on there. Yeah. For, he's kind of like the Meryl Streep of this category. Sure. I think Sam Pittman will be like that. In the end, the majority of the votes went to one Dan Lanning. Now, Jeremy Chapman says you could have given some strong consideration to Cortez Hankton. I don't disagree. Joe Tone also mentioning Trey Scott for the number of defensive linemen he brought in. I think that Joe's potentially right about that. Uh, but there's no doubt that Lanning's also a deserving winner. And by the way, Lanning apparently celebrating his Eddie Award early. Maybe he was already tipped off that he was going to win the award. 
He was seen this week having dinner with some of those UGA signees that he just brought in and some of the guys that he inherited when he became Georgia's outside linebackers coach. Here's Dan Lanning enjoying that dinner, and it's kind of nice to see the Eddie Award winner for Georgia's top recruiter enjoying some of the spoils of victory there with some of the recruits that he brought in and some of those other five-star names. Uh, I guess in addition to knowing some of the others, you can't help but notice uh, how, as one of our Dog Nation Daily viewers said this morning, how swole Brenton Cox is looking on that one. So let's have fun with this. Let's go in a couple different directions. Number one, I want to know, uh, it was Hibachi Grill, of course. Do you think all those guys caught the little shrimp appetizer that the chef threw their way? Oh, sure. Was anybody afraid they, of... They, they do, like, the little volcano thing with the onions, too. Yeah. Was anybody afraid of the fire? I, I don't think so. I'm sure if Lanning, with the new defensive coordinator salary, was like, you know, get whatever yeah. you want, boy. Get whatever oh, yeah. you want, boys. And, and there, there isn't anyone in that group that's not getting the fried rice. <laughs> or what about... No, nobody probably got the veggie plate. Nobody no. probably got... Most people got no. the steak and lobster, perhaps. Yeah, I would say probably Maybe some so. scallops. But, you know, let's flash that one back up there. You know the one thing I think about when I see that picture right there? Number one, I think that's the most outstanding uh, professional drip of future pro really NFL is. outside linebackers. They call themselves the Wolf Pack. It really is. Um, but, you know... I see those guys. I mean, look at there. From left to right, you got Brenton Cox. You go down there's Nolan Smith, Adam Anderson, Aziz Ojolari, who we wrote about today on Dog Nation in the middle. Then there's Jermaine Johnson. In the back corner right there is Robert Beal. Um, flanking Dan Lanning's right shoulder is Walter Grant. But the one thing that, that comes to my mind when I watch that picture is I, re I remember, didn't somebody say that I want you to eat and I want you to yeah. eat and I want you to eat and I want I you to eat. I have heard tell that video exists somewhere on the internet. And I want you to eat. Well, it looks like the wolf pack is eating. They're in that taking picture. him up on that uh, command. That's uh, pretty cool to see. All right. So with all that said, we've now come to the main event of the evening. The Eddie's, the most prestigious award given to UGA recruits in honor of the 2019 class. It is now time for the moment you've all been waiting for, the Eddie for the recruit of the year for Georgia's 2019 class. And boy, let me tell you something. You want to talk about a distinguished collection of names to choose between. You could pick a lot of different guys here. Let's see those nominees. Nolan Smith, we just saw a photo of him with the uh, dinner there with Dan Lanning. Trayvon Walker, we talked a lot about. George Pickens, you know how excited I was when Georgia nabbed Pickens back in uh, early February. The Kobe Dean, for the obvious reasons, he's been a big topic of conversation. Jeff, has the competition for the Eddie for Recruit of the Year ever been more intense than it is right now? We could have made this the five-star, the best five-star category. A lot of, lot of names. And I know there's some old-school curmudgeons out there that probably, probably think everybody should get an award and nobody should be a two-time winner, but very stout group. Yeah, it is. And really, even though really anybody on this <coughs> list is a deserving winner, Ultimately, it's all said and done, and I think many of you in our, in our comment section are going to agree. When you open the envelope and uh, give out the award, there was never any real question as, as to who it was going to be. The Eddie for Georgia's 2019 Recruit of the Year, congratulations to Nolan Smith. Not just because he's a great player, but because all along this 2019 cycle, Jeff, he was always seemingly there at the right time to generate that extra dose of momentum for this class. Nolan was outspoken when he needed to be. He's a charismatic figure. He is kind of a Pied Piper. And for all of that, those are reasons why a guy like Nolan gets a chance to get a nod like this. So let me see if I can do this in maybe 20, 25 quick seconds. Number one overall recruit in the country, check. Longest tenured recruit in the Georgia class, check. <coughs> Excuse me, did some behind the scenes, Brandon's favorite term, Pied Pipering for yeah. the University of Georgia. Let's call him a best supporting actor in several eventual commitments to yep. the University of Georgia. Maybe even 2020 guys as well, like Legend Cavazos. Guy who delivers on all the hype. Maybe he created a little bit of drama in his recruitment, but I think that's maybe a casualty of being committed in this day and age for over 600 days. Signs with the University of Georgia, going to be a linchpin in this class. Loves Georgia, had the ability to go elsewhere. There was some Clemson, there was some Alabama, there was some Penn State. In the event, it was a homecoming for him in the very end, and everybody got the happy ending. Nolan Smith is at the University of Georgia. So thanks, guys, for and gals for participating in this year's Eddie's. The awards here on Before the Hedge is presented by Kroger, given to the top recruits, the top moments for Georgia's 2019 class. We'll look forward to hearing your feedback on this, either on Twitter, at Jeff Sintel, 
or at Dog Nation Daily or in our video comment sections right now. Don't forget, we've still got the hurry up coming up. As many of your questions and comments we can take over the course of five minutes, and we'll give away a Kroger $50. How about them groceries gift card coming up in just a moment? But before that, though, Jeff, let's turn the attention back over to you, pass the baton for another one of my favorite things each and every week, your weekly six pack as you share your latest dose of trivia questions designed to trip me up, fool me, and make me look bad in this public forum. So, <laughs> I like how you start that out one, that one out. Now you're, you're just you're just taking this moment for what it is, I really correct? am, I really am. First of all, let's tr establish a new tradition with the Eddies. I want everybody, before we start this uh, procedure, guess how many, let's guess how many Brandon's gonna get right. I'd say two, because I think I already know one of the questions, I know I'm not gonna get it. To thine own self be true. He's now, self-awareness is something that Dog Nation Daily right. is handling very well. We're no fan of Henry David Thoreau around here, though. Maybe because that. he's got his wingman Eddie with him right now, helping him out like Maverick and Goose style from Top Gun. Let's hit the six pack, guys, really fast. All right, here we go, question number one. Number one, we got a little bit of buzz, obviously. A lot of buzz of late about Auburn and Georgia, we get it. Here's a history lesson, though. What month did the Deep South's oldest rivalry kick off for the first time? A, a August. <coughs> B, September, C, October, D, November, or E, none of the above. Wow, really good question. I'm going to assume because E is a choice that it must be none of the above. Now, we're going back to like 1892 or something like this for this, um, for this, you know, for this answer. So the fact that you're giving E as a choice leads me to believe that it must be an option. So I'm going to say E, none of the above. You're not outthinking yourself, are you I'm there, not. sir? I hope not anyway. Not outthinking yourself there, Ro sir. Hawkins says B, September. <laughs> well, let's see, we got, we got people on YouTube coming in. Crystal Christie says E. C Hill with a C. Uh, Kelly Burnett with a Socrates reference. Kelly, thanks for joining us. We appreciate you uh, showing up in the chat as well. Shane Bentley with B. Uh, CJ Davis, really appreciate you watching. Wait, I thought to thine own self be true was uh, Henry David Thoreau, like the guy that lived on the pond. Wasn't that um, wasn't that uh, the sheriff in Mayberry? Wasn't that who said that? Barney Five. Barney. No, that's the deputy. That's the deputy. Oh, oh Andy, a Andy Taylor. Andy, Andy Ta Griffith. Andy Griffith char character right there. But um, flashing to the question, I've given everybody on yeah. Facebook and everybody on YouTube time Will to chime. Will Go in. Dog says it was in January. If he's right about that, that's impressive. Does anybody know the answer? <laughs> Tough one, huh? E. It's none of the above, but. The first Auburn Georgia tilt was actually played in February. Is that right? Played in February. My goodness. You could have read that earlier, uh, maybe last week on dognation.com, but one of our writers, Chip Towers, uh, unearthed that nugget for the populace. But uh, Yeah, now to correct Will Go Dogs, he said the first time <coughs> um, these two teams played was in January. Even back in 1892, Auburn was still on probation, so they weren't eligible to play in January. Mm. 1892. The football game was played in February, of all things. Of all things. Yeah. Brandon. That's the inaugural season for Georgia football. One and one. There you go. There you one go. for one. Good job. His batting average will never be higher than in this one moment. Let's go. Number two. Hmm. Speaking of UGA Auburn, which one of these events happened first? Deep South sold its rivalry, 1892. Uh -huh. Coca-Cola was sold in bottles for the first time. B, the first recorded college basketball game occurs. Okay. C, the first Ford vehicle of any kind was created. D, the inaugural Boston Marathon is held. Or E, Georgia faced Auburn back when America had just 44 states. All right, this is a challenge. You're going to uh, learn a little bit about that. I'll, this is a perspective in American history when all this was happening. I'll admit I don't 100% know about this, but I'm going to say because running doesn't require any equipment as a sport, it's invented first. Boston's kind of an old city, therefore I'm going to go Boston Marathon being older than these other things. <laughs> I don't believe it's Coke. To me, that's a 1900s thing. Uh, basketball is actually a fairly young sport. It only celebrated centennial back in the 90s. Um, uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Boston Marathon happened before the other stuff. So Crow King one two three has a C C G da C G Davis with a marathon. Crystal Christie says C. Alan Young says the Ford. Shane Bentley A with a question mark next to it. C Hill with a C. Hashim Spikes with marathon. a C. I'm going Boston Marathon. Is that your Regis Philbin voice? Final answer. Is that my final answer? Yeah. And I gave you reasoning. <laughs> Great reasoning. Can we get a, we gotta get the buzzer though, right? The buzzer. Yeah, the buzzer needs, sounded. The buzzer sounded. <clears throat> okay, this is cool. Georgia faced Auburn back when America had just 44 states. 
That happened first of all those things. Uh huh. That was the first thing. Georgia Auburn part one. That was it. The Tigers may or may not have a, have had a pair of standout players who wait for it used to attend UGA. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Taking those cast offs and transfers even back then. May or may not. We're not sure. If, I wasn't around in eighteen ninety two, so I can tell you for sure. Yeah. One for two. Yeah. One for two. Moving on to number three. We always talk up the five stars here on this show. How long did it take Kirby Smart to land a commit from a five-star prospect once he took the job at Georgia? A, one day, B, three days, C, six, six days, or D, 16 days. Wouldn't that be interesting symmetry if it took 16 days and that was his jersey number? Yeah, that would be interesting symmetry. So, Jacob Eason, did he ever stop being a Georgia commitment? I don't remember that. He never stopped being one? Never stopped. Um, then the first five star would that have been Nada? No, that would not be Nada. Keep thinking, sir. You got um, you got time on the clock. Got time on the shot clock. Julian Rochester. <laughs> Kelly Burnett knows that the "To Thine Own Self Be True," and I knew this one is actually Shakespearean. Okay. Um, Shane Bentley says A. Darren Johnson D. C. Crow King one two three says three days. Uh, B, 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 lots of... I don't know. you got to tell me. Double R, double R on the YouTube on the YouTube vector. He knows what he's talking about. He knows him some six-pack trivia. Right. Brings up the name LeCount. LeCount oh, was actually... Oh, 2017, yeah, commit. That's good. LeCount was the first Kirby Smart commit. And let's go to the answer board and find out how long it took him to get Kirby to get a five-star on the hook for the University of Georgia. That's really good. So around that same time... DJ Dallas decommitted from Georgia, ended up going to Miami, and Richard LeCount came in. The rest is, they say, history, right? It's very interesting. All of the Rick recruits, Bailey Hawkman, uh, Devonta Smith, uh, DJ Dallas, uh, uh, what was his name? Jake Fromm's receiver at Houston County, Darian Anderson. Uh, all those guys eventually decommitted from Georgia. And the first one, it took Kirby six days, was Richard LeCount III. Shabazz Ali is asking you if you had the big house breakfast yet. What's he talking about? I don't know what Big House Breakfast. You know about breakfast and stuff I mean, I like love that. breakfast, but I, I, this is apparently something specific. This is something probably like By the pancakes. way, Roe Hawkins says he's 0 for 3. Roe, we at least appreciate you being honest. <laughs> Honesty is your best yeah, policy. exactly. Uh, maybe you'll get invited to the Yetis next year if you're, if you're very honest. Moving on, number four. Number four. This is a good one, Brandon. All right. Uh, not a horn tutor, but let's think back to the Rick era at UGA for a bit. There are eight players still at UGA who committed or signed to play for the previous coaching staff. Let's call them the Mesozoic era Rick recruits. Can you name any four of those guys? So we actually talked a little bit about this on Dog Nation Daily today, and the ones that come to mind right away are uh, Charlie Werner, uh, Ben Cleveland, uh, Rodrigo Blankenship, Tay Crowder, and around that time, it starts getting a little fuzzy for me uh, beyond beyond those four that I just mentioned. Deep in the weeds, huh? After that, well, there yeah. are actually four more, Brandon. Yeah. Uh, and a couple of them, I'm going to say maybe should have got, maybe should have got. Uh huh. The other, there's a couple of them that are just maybe formalities, I guess, right. or technicalities. Not, I don't expect a lot yeah. of people. Maybe only the people that co- they cook up six pack trivia questions mm-hmm. each week are going to know these. But um, I would say there's eight names. The ones that maybe were glaring that I would say are omissions. Well, let me just be really clear. I just gave four, so I just got them right. You did get it right. I got the question right. Uh, the other four, though, are, are a little hard for me to remember. Uh, so the, the ricked recruits, you got to remember, there's four more. You didn't, one you didn't mention, probably two of these four, I would say, man, Brandon, you, you could get yeah. those. One of those is Julian Rochester. Okay, so I didn't remember him being a Rick recruit. I remember that being a Kirby Smart guy, but that makes sense. He was he showed up in yeah. June, July of that, that recruiting. Makes that makes sense. Um, uh, Justin Young, another name that goes back to Grayson High School, fair back enough. when Georgia used to get guys from Grayson. <laughs> right, fair uh, enough. Michael Barnett is another guy. To, fair uh, enough. Tay Crowder. But a couple that you should have got, Tyler Clark, he was also a Rick recruit, okay. and also Tyreek McGee. All right, well, good job there. Good job there. I remember back in the days, some of the early Dog Nation reporting, especially when we were – trying to canvas a UGA recruiting beat with multiple guys is uh, our own Mike Carvel wrote a story about Tyreek McGee committing to Georgia. And I think uh, Jeremy Pruitt was following him to church. And I think he committed during church or right around church services or something like that for Tyreek McGee. And Pruitt actually- You realize burnt- you're bearing the lead. The fact that Jeremy Pruitt went to church <laughs> was probably the headline. <laughs> well, Tyreek McGee, and funny, he noticed Tyreek McGee at a camp where his son was working, maybe a lower tier prospect camp where his son was working as a quarterback as well. There you go. Fascinating. 
let's let's let's, let's refocus. Let's All get right. your inner inner inner. I got Ro- that one right. Let's get your inner Roquan back for yeah, this listen, next. Yeah, I, I got that one right. I'm I'm feeling pretty good right now. The next one. What is it? Three of four, three of five for you? Seems like 12, but I guess it's only five. Uh, no, okay. Mr. Adams has been buzzing a lot of late about the lack of 1,000-yard receivers at Georgia. Uh-huh. The astute Dog Nation reader knows that Terrence Edwards is the only 1,000-yard receiver at UGA. But who finished number two? Single season Single mark. Single season mark. Who has the second highest total of receiving yards in a single season at, at the University of Georgia? I tell you a name that I'm surprised not to see on that list is Malcolm Mitchell. But of that list, um, I agree with Maurice Carter. He says, I think Jeff is setting us up on purpose. The name A.J. Green, if you want to gravitate towards that. The thing to remember, though, is that Green missed some time in 2010 because of suspension. I don't know one of those goofball things that Georgia agreed to do. <laughs> um, so maybe Green's not really the answer there. Uh, Massaqua, you're tempted to say that. Obviously put up some nice numbers playing with Matthew Stafford. And those guys played together, which is interesting. Yeah. Massaquai and Green played Yeah, together. maybe they split some time amongst that. Um, you know what? Bryce Hunter caught, had to have caught a ton of balls playing for Eric Zier. I'm going to go Bryce Hunter. Bryce Hunter. going to go Bryce Hunter. You're going to say something like Bryce Hunter era, where we're, we're somewhere around 1,000 yards for a receiver back when Bryce Hunter played. is like 1,500 right now. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, Zyra's putting up big numbers. Though. He was. He was. Uh, Ayers Zyra and everything else like that. Still one of the greatest quarterbacks at the University of Georgia. Now the color guy on the uh, broadcast for all you young folks. Had you asked me without choices who the single season – guy is behind uh, Terrence Edwards, I would have said Malcolm Mitchell. Look at the categories one more time. There's another name you didn't even touch on. You didn't even, you didn't even, you didn't even take a whiff at one of those last names on that category. And the number D. Hines Ward. I feel like I don't remember him putting up big receiving numbers. I mean, obviously he goes on to a Hall of Fame NFL career, but I mean, I think of him playing quarterback against Georgia Tech or tailback against Alabama. Mini game. I was about to say, who thinks Brandon got it right? I did. I told you I got it. Bryce right. Hunter. Yeah. Back then, he had 970 yards receiving, and that feels like 1,400. I these, realized these we're like 45 minutes late. So let's I, move on. Let's oh, move no, on. Hold on. Let, let me just say this real quick. When you look at how high Eric Zier still ranks on like NCAA passing yards list, it gives you an idea of just how phenomenal the quarterback he really was. And Bryce Hunter was a good receiver, but he benefits from getting the ball thrown to him by Eric Zier. The fact that in this past happy age we've been in for the last decade, Zier still ranks as high as he does on these quarterback lists. He is one of the most underrated players in college football history. Credit. College football history. Credit to a lot of guys that used to coach him, uh, Coach McDuffie, you remember Coach Davis, uh, mm-hmm. M. Singer, a lot of yeah. those guys that were from that era where Georgia, all they could do was throw the ball because they didn't have any offensive linemen, didn't have any defense. Hold on, i, I got to take a shot at my boy Maurice Carter here who says I made a good guess. Maurice, I just laid out my thought process on this. I cast aside A.J. Green for the obvious reasons. I talked about why it wouldn't be Heinz Ward. Um, I, you know, questioned Mom and Massaqua. That's a... That's a genius at work right there, going through his process of elimination and really arriving at the right answer. Listen, y'all can say what you want to me about most weeks. I just dominated that question. Brandon was, was playing the field, looking through all of his receivers, going through all his progressions, eliminating, using deductive and inductive reasoning. Main thing about that category is it was nice to honor and remember the name Bryce Hunter as yeah, well. Yeah, the uh, late, great Bryce Hunter for sure. So everybody, this is the mini game here. Who's already missed the mark and didn't go over on Brandon's questions right? Because yeah, listen, I'm killing you all today. I think you got, I think you're at three or five or yep. four or five. How many has he missed? Has he I've missed only missed any? one. How many buzzers has he got? One? I've only missed one. So there we go. All right. One more to go. Here we go. One more to go, guys. Um, hopefully you've been watching. Hopefully you've been watching out there. Who won the first Eddie in Dog Nations, in Dog Nation Before the Hedges recruiting show history? And Brett, if you can't remember yeah, this, let's one, see how much of our audience has been with us since the beginning of the show, and let's see who can get this one correct here. Um, uh, we'll, we'll see who, who can kind of come up with the answer here. Hopefully, some people have been with us from the beginning. They're able to uh, get this one. As of yet, we haven't seen that right answer. Uh, John McMillan says that he knows. Uh, who it is. Alan Young knows who it is. So we're starting to see some of those kind of answers coming in. So can we say congratulations to Dominic Blaylock, Big Play Blay, or uh, Dom the Bomb, whatever nickname you want for him. Add to the list of accolades the first ever winner of the Eddie. And how appropriate is that? 
that Blaylock gets to be the first ever uh, Eddie's winner. <laughs> you know, and by the way, I still can't get over the bronzed Eddie look there. That's really cool looking. It's a good before the hedges show moment, isn't it, Brandon? It is a great moment. One of the great moments in Dog Nation history. I'll tell you about another great moment in Dog Nation history every week on Before the Hedges. I think it's time for the hurry up. Let's do it. Put five minutes on the clock. As many of your questions and comments as we can take over the course of five minutes. We'll see if we can break some records on this. And then we haven't talked a lot of 2020 recruits as of yet, but we'll start doing that uh, right now. Carlos Folsom says that Bryce Hunter signed lie grab against Florida in the rain. One of the best grabs ever and one of, really one of the heartbreaking games for Georgia. Hunter's touchdown should have been the difference. Georgia should have beaten Florida in 1993. It's my call timeout, though. Unbelievable. Uh, K9 Blue says, which wide receiver, aside from D-Rob and starters from last <coughs> year, is going to break out this year? Is it Simmons? Is it Bush? Is it Landers? Jackson, Cager, Blaylock, Pickens, Tongue? Jeff, who do you have on that one? Karis Jackson. Peach County stand up. That's my answer. Uh, Darren Johnson has a great question. Do you think Brenton Cox is going to be a defensive end this spring? Not an outside linebacker, but a defensive end. I think Brenton's going to be a guy that ends up to be that edge setter, that strong side defensive end. I can see Aziz Ojolari, Aziz Ojolari playing there as well. Robert Reynolds says over or under Pickens touchdowns of three. I'm going to go over the three for that. Over for three, especially if he shows up in red and black. Uh, Ro Hawkins says how, many, how do you think Zeus is coming along right now? I think he's coming along famously. Um, Shabazz Ali says, is that a gold dog? No, Shabazz, that's Eddie. Uh, that's not a gold dog. Not it's a Eddie. gold dog. Moving it's, on. It's, it's Eddie the Blind Squirrel. We're at five. We're at five. Um, let's keep going here as with uh, more of our comments. Um, all right, here we go. Will we have a 1,000-yard receiver in the next four years? Uh, that's John William Adams' question. Uh, yes, I would say multiple 1,000-yard receivers. Who do you think it's most likely to be? Most likely 1,000-yard receiver. Uh, I think Jeremiah Holland's going to get one of those. Bill Kelly says, what about Tymon Mitchell? What do you think about his future at Georgia? Very smart. True uh, zero technique, uh, true nose tackle. Remember, guys, he had a 25-26 on his ACT. Uh, D-tackles are usually nose guards. Do not come that astute. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Seven. Uh, back over here on the uh, YouTube side of things here for a moment, Chevron Hanna says, do you think Jake Fromm has – an actual chance to win the Heisman this year. Davey O'Brien Award, yeah. Uh, oh, I, I don't think the Heisman. I don't think it's out of, out of realm at all for him to win the Heisman. I'm not saying he's going to, but best player on the best team, that's absolutely in play. I just think uh, there'll be some split votes there trying to determine whether Georgia's best player is actually uh, DeAndre Swift or uh, Jake Fromm. Uh, Double R says, any updates on Jacoby Criswell? Uh, Criswell's taking his visit tour, which would be very interesting. I think he's got Ole Miss this weekend. Um, he's going to go visit North Carolina as well, or maybe just to visit in North Carolina. George is in that hit parade as well. Watch that visit. C.J. Davis asks, who do you think the return guy is going to be this season? I think King Karras is a guy you think about there. Karras Jackson's a guy to think about. Demetrius Robinson, Al Robertson always has the speed to do that. Uh, look for a guy as well, Dominic Blaylock. I think he could be your punt returner as well. That kid is working seriously hard to play right away at Georgia. Another name to think about there is James Cook. Uh, Brian McPhail asked about the possibility that Georgia goes undefeated this year. Jeff, it's something on Dog Nation Daily I've said a couple times. I think Georgia needs to. I think it wants to be the number one seed so it can play the Peach Bowl in Atlanta. I think Georgia's best chance uh, so far, their best team so far, their best chance to be everything Dog Nation dreams of. Sugar falling down from the sky. I think the 2019 team checks all those boxes. Crow King 123 says, who are you higher on, Brian Herring or James Cook? Brian Herring. Yeah, I think, I think the Brian Herring could really be heard from this year. Uh, Bobby Powell says, along the lines of what you are just talking about, will UGA get over that last hurdle this year for the national championship? Good question from Bobby Powell. There's going to be some interesting uh, things with Georgia this year. Do they win the SEC championship and get back into the game? Yeah, I think so. But dream scenario, and this is a gangbusters thought bubble right here for everybody. What if they get in that Final Four and their names like Jacob Eason in Washington, Justin Fields in Ohio State, Tua in Alabama, or Clemson and Trevor Lawrence in that thing? Very fascinating possibility there. Jay Squillis asks a good question. He says, will James Cook end up with more rushing or receiving yards this year? Receiving. Uh, Josh McMillan says, what happened to B.A. versus Jeff in the dunk contest? It's got to be an eight-foot goal. I can't, I, I can't even dunk a nine-foot goal in uh, this day and age, I don't believe. Um, Kevin Jones says, if UGA hoists the trophy this year, which elite true freshman 2019 recruit wins the Eddie for biggest impact freshman? That's a good question by mm. Kevin Jones. Is that a Facebook question right it there? It is. That's a good question. That might be a candidate for the How About Them Groceries gift card. Uh, freshman biggest impact. Ooh, ooh. Did he say offense or defense or just anywhere? anywhere. I might go to Kobe Dean. 
Mm. I mean, I, I think that I think that's a big year from Channing Tindall, that linebacker position. I might, might still go Dean. I think that uh, Pickens and Blaylock are going to be a big part of that conversation on offense, especially. I mean, I really, I think they both have a chance to be that. So he moved me off the block a little bit when he said freshman, because that made me dismiss DJ Daniel, who I think it will be. Mm -hmm. Or Jermaine Johnson. Or Jermaine Johnson, who I think it will be. I'm going to go Trayvon Walker, but I'm really wanting to say Dominic Blaylock right there. Josh McMillan says, along the same line, about the most impactful freshman. Uh, somebody also asked a moment ago, is Dominic Blaylock going to be the Heinz Ward 2.0? That kind of versatility and ability to play multiple positions. No, not a multiple positions guy, but I think uh, I think Blaylock will be. I don't know if there's been a guy that can be what Blaylock is at Georgia. I think Blaylock will be a consistent, forty catch, six hundred yard guy, especially his last three years at Georgia. You want to give the uh, Kroger fifty dollar how about them groceries gift card to Kevin Jones for a really good question? Kevin Jones for a really good question, and I got a quick five ten second PSA, guys. If you win something um, from a Dog Nation before the hedges. How about them groceries hurry up around in the past? We've given one away to somebody last week on YouTube, and it is very hard for us to find you guys on YouTube. Hard to connect to an email address, hard to connect to anything. So if you've won something in the past, uh, especially from a YouTube, especially last week, and we've got one other mystery winner from about three or four weeks ago, contact us, send us a DM. Uh, DM Dog Nation, send us an email. You can find my email atop my Twitter account on Twitter. We want to get you that $50 from Kroger so you can go click list crazy and you can enjoy yourself some good groceries from those fine folks at Kroger. Jess and Tell, it's been so much fun to be a part of the Eddies with you today. Love your recruiting insight. How, by the way, how many questions we get in? Do you know? We, we rolled through a bunch there, right? 20. There. Pretty impressive. That's close to a record, if not a record. 20 questions, uh, lots of stories coming up. We got to write a bunch because even though it's the slow season, we got to crank out good content. No such thing as the slow season. I'll send you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for Dog Nation Daily. Have a great day. We'll talk to you then. Thanks for being with us here on Before the Hedges presented by Kirby. You'll have a great day, everybody.